the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. So just a few minutes ago, each one of us received ashes. The priest on the very crown of their head. And the rest of you, the faithful, on your forehead. A reminder, a reminder from Holy Mother Church that we are from the dust of the earth. And one day we will return to that earth. A reminder from our mother that time is short, that eternity looms and is forever, that one day our bodies will fail us. Dust you are, unto dust you shall return. Again, always, it's our mother who speaks, it's the church who speaks. She wants us to be prepared for the moment when God will call us. And that's why she gives us this period of Lent. It's a great blessing, a great gift from God, a great gift from the church. A time when we do penance, penance for our past transgressions, and penance in order to bring ourselves more surely on track in the measure that we may be drifted from the path that's going to lead us one day to God. And that measure we need to adjust, we need to turn back, we need to convert. And all of us are meant to ask ourselves as we start Lent with this recollection what we need to do, what we personally, what I personally need to do in order to be more surely on track to God. The church, however, recommends us three principal things to work on during the time of Lent. Firstly, prayer. Lent is a time of special prayer. It's not a time of multiplying prayers. It's a time for really praying, really lifting our mind and our heart to God. Our mind, our thoughts, to turn our thoughts to our God who is so good and who is so great and on whom we depend at every moment. But our heart, to lift our hearts and the sense of offering, offering ourself, accepting what he asks of us, accepting the crosses that are there, the sorrows that are there, and offering ourselves. So our prayer, where we we make this effort to elevate our mind, our heart, our soul to God, that is meant to have consequences. That is meant to carry over then into our practical efforts during this time of Lent. And so the church recommends two particular things. Firstly, fasting. The secondly, almsgiving. Now fasting, when we think of that, of course, we think of the standard fast, which is no longer strictly obligatory. Today it is, Ash Wednesday. Good Friday it is, if you are of age. But other than that, it's not obligatory anymore. The the rather strict fast that the church always encouraged her faithful, her children, to do during Lent. Well, it's no longer strictly obligatory, and yet we must keep the spirit of the fast. And for that, we must understand what it means to fast. It's a question of mortifying our appetites for pleasure, for what is pleasant. Well, it's not just a question of food, although it's the most obvious place to start. We can can maybe not do the strict fast, but we can eat less at every meal. We can skip snacks. We can give up the foods that we find most pleasurable to us. It doesn't have to be sweets. For one, it might be whiskey for an adult. For another, it might be, you know, cream cheese. I don't know. It's, it's a question of mortifying our appetites. So for food, mortifying the appetite for pleasure, but the rest of the body demands its due too. So we can mortify our tendency to seek what is pleasant and soft, whether it be our favorite pillow or whether it be an easy armchair or whether it be the warmest sweater that we have. We mortify our body the body's desire for comfort. 
But we can go further than that. And here's where maybe I would encourage you to look especially. We can mortify our appetite for fun. Just the pleasure of fun. Fun is not a bad thing. Fun has its place. It's even important at times for sure. And yet we tend to let fun, the desire for fun, desire for a good time, push us, pull us rather, to neglect what is more important, to neglect our soul, to neglect our duty, our studies, our attention in class, our homework, our chores. And there maybe is where we look. Where is that appetite for a good time, whether it be in computer games or whether it be in movies or whether it be even in reading, perhaps. It's a pleasurable thing and a good thing, but it depends what we're reading and it depends what else we maybe should be doing at that moment. So we, we mortify this appetite for pleasure, for what is pleasant to us. We can go further. For example, the, the desire to hear the latest, the desire to be constantly in touch. Right? Lent's a perfect time to give up the cell phone, to give up talking on the phone, to give up texting, to give up computer, if you're using the computer for any recreational purpose, right? to mortify that desire for validation and attention and to be the center of someone else's life. All of these are examples and only examples. And yet that's where the church points us. She says, fast, mortify your appetite for pleasure to attain a greater mastery over yourself so that you can be more faithful to your God. She also encourages us to give alms. Immediately we think of giving money to the poor. Well, I'm sure most of you don't have a ton of that. Right, so let's not look there necessarily, although the church has always insisted that we give of what we have to help those who have less. And all of us here have a lot more than we think we do when it comes to material things, in our clothes, in our toys, in our food, in, in, and in our spending money. Right, and there's a good area to look. Can you give something away? Can you give it to someone who has less? It's a way of giving alms. It's not strictly to someone who's on the street with no home. And yet at the same time, it is detaching yourself from the material things of this world that pull us, hold us so strongly at times. And yet I think again here, although that's more the literal sense of almsgiving, I think maybe we can go to a broader sense and obtain more during this time of Lent, give more during this time of Lent. Giving alms really means being merciful. And we aren't just merciful or meant to be merciful when it comes to material things. We're meant to be merciful in the spiritual things. We're meant to be merciful to those around us, to those around us who have weaknesses, faults and failures, to those around us who are struggling, maybe struggling academically, maybe struggling on the ball field, who knows, maybe struggling to fit in. We show mercy. We show mercy to those around us in their struggles. We show compassion to them. This is what it means to give alms in the broader sense. And all of us have many, many opportunities here where we can make an effort and by that effort, grow in forgetfulness of self and grow in consideration and attention for the souls around us that we are meant to help go to God. So these are the three areas that Holy Mother Church encourages us to look during this time of Lent. Prayer, fasting, mortifying our appetite for pleasure, and almsgiving, being merciful a serious task that we have before us to save our soul in this short time that we have, a task that we don't take seriously enough, perhaps. In fact, we can probably say that none of us take it maybe quite seriously enough, at least at times. Holy Mother Church knows human nature. 
And so she says, all right, so that's the way we are, we're human beings. But let's, as we prepare for the celebration of the passion and death of our Lord, how far he was willing and is willing to go for our souls, let us make a special effort. Let us take 40 days, 40 days to prepare our souls, 40 days to fortify our souls, 40 days to bring our souls back to God. And this day of recollection is meant to help us do that. Again, as in the last one that we did at the beginning of Lent, a lot is left up to you, your students. Right? We certainly can't and we won't try to have eyes in the back of our heads. We're not concerned about that. And why not? Because you can only grow in your soul when you are making the effort because you want to. You won't grow because someone's standing there watching you and you do what's asked of you. You grow because you want to grow. You want to love God. You want to be strong. You want to be what you're meant to be. And so these recollections and the retreats likewise that we, we are starting to do more of, right? a lot is left to your effort because that's where you'll grow. And of course, we do know that you do want those things even though you're human beings like we are, right? and therefore fall short at times like we do. Right? So let's take advantage of this, of this day of recollection. Let's be determined to, if you haven't yet decided what you want to do for your Lenten resolutions, let's be sure before the end of today to have chosen what you're going to work on during this time of Lent as a gesture towards God, that you love him, you want to be strong for him, and as a gesture of reparation and remorse for the sins of the past. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.